We are joined next by Brett Schaefer, who is with the Heritage Foundation. He's their International Regulatory Affairs Fellow. Here with us next to talk about President Trump's decision to um, withhold funding from the World Health Organization. Brett Schaefer, thanks for being here. Brett Schaefer, can you hear me okay? I should. Great. Great. Um, Let me ask you, first of all, were you surprised by President Trump's uh, announcement? I was surprised a little bit about the timing of it. I know that there had been consideration of uh, cutting funding uh, to the World Health Organization, but the decision to cut funding right now in the midst of the COVID-19 outbreak in so many countries around the world uh, did take me by surprise. That doesn't mean that the president doesn't have legitimate criticism of the World Health Organization, particularly its willingness to take Chinese claims and data at face value. Uh, which caused enormous uh, damage economically around the world and enormous loss of life in many countries, including the United States. So he has a legitimate uh, reason to be very upset with the organization. But the decision to cut funding at this moment, when so many countries are going to rely on the World Health Organization in the upcoming months, uh, did take me a bit by surprise. There's a headline in The Washington Post that says Trump versus WHO, the latest twist in a shifting China policy. Do you think the WHO decision was largely about China and not about the health organization itself? Mm. Well, you have to understand that the World Health Organization, like many international organizations, uh, has a very large political component to it. The organization is governed by the member states. It relies on the member states to provide funding for it. But it also, because it doesn't have any real authority of its own to conduct investigations or to gather information independently, it relies on governments to provide it with that information. And with countries like the United States or the United Kingdom or many other countries around the world, which are fairly transparent and willing to work with this organization in a very cooperative way, that's not much of a problem. But with a country like China, which has a long history of trying to conceal and uh, uh, deny wrongdoing or missteps domestically or in the image that it presents to the world, this can lead to enormous complications. And what happened here clearly was that China uh, tried to deny what was going on domestically and to downplay the threat to the international community of the COVID-19 outbreak. And, And the World Health Organization, unfortunately, had to rely on Chinese information there where the World Health Organization went wrong is that it took Chinese statements and information at face value when there was evidence, uh, both historically and concurrently, that they should not do so. For instance, historically, China, in the SARS outbreak, was unwilling uh, to be transparent during that outbreak and denied and obfuscated for months uh, in providing information to the World Health Organization. That led to the spread of that disease and hundreds of deaths. So the World Health Organization knew in the past that China wasn't willing to be transparent and cooperative, but it took Chinese statements at face value this time. Moreover, there was information provided by Taiwan that this disease was a potential pandemic and that there was evidence of human to human transmission, even while China was denying that to the World Health Organization. Instead of taking that information from Taiwan and using it to perhaps question what it was hearing from China, The World Health Organization just parroted Chinese uh, statements saying that there was no evidence of human-to-human transmission, and we're all paying the price for that. Some perspective on funding for the World Health Organization, this from the World Economic Forum. The United States of America, and this is a total of, this is from um, uh, 2018 budget, roughly $400 million a year funded by the United States, the largest funder, the second largest funder, at over $200 million is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the U.K., Germany, China's con- contribution uh, under $100 million uh, annually. Brett mm-hmm. Schaefer, what do you think the, the proper role of the, the World Health Organization during a pandemic, this pandemic in particular, should be? Well, the World Health Organization is supposed to be our early warning system for these sorts of things. It's uh, It's supposed to track potential pandemics. It's supposed to launch and uh, send uh, teams of experts into the countries to take a look at the situation directly to assess the the threat that the disease poses to the international community and then work with other member states to arrest and, and control that threat if necessary. 
In this case, uh, the World Health Organization wasn't even able to send an expert team into China until mid-February because the Chinese government wouldn't let them. And instead of calling the Chinese government to account for that lack of cooperation and lack of transparency, they instead, like I said, praised China for its transparency. They praised China for uh, taking unprecedented steps in, in controlling this, uh, this outbreak, all of which we know now uh, to be untrue and unwarranted.